today we have another food tour video and it's in one of my favorite cities to visit ever. Me and Bird literally love Seattle so much to the point where we have considered moving there, but in the past we've only been able to stay for a few days. So this trip was really awesome because we stayed for a whole week and I thought it was gonna be really chill. I didn't have any crazy food itineraries planned like I usually do. So I thought I could fit it all in one video, but then I imported all the clips and it was over seven hours of footage. So we're splitting it up and today's video is part one and next week we will be coming out with part two. So make sure you subscribe so you can stay tuned for that. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Biangbiang Biang noodles, which I've heard so many good things about. You guys know I love Biangbiang Biang noodles. Here I have the stewed pork belly spicy dry mix noodles, something like that. It's called something like that. You can see that each noodle is super unique. They're not like super perfect, and that's how you know the ham pulled. They're made with love. Looks like in here we have some pork belly, we have some cabbage, some bell pepper, and each noodle is very nicely seasoned. Mm, that noodle texture is so chewy. The noodles are actually so smooth because I've had a lot of hand-pulled noodles and these are some of the smoothest hand-pulled noodles I've ever had. I really like the spice that they put in there and I feel like it's actually not too oily. Biang Biang noodles sometimes can be a bit too oily, but I feel like this one's not as much. All right, let's try some pork belly. Whoa, that melts in your mouth. So fatty, so tender, super delicious. We also got the mala beef dry spicy noodles. It looks pretty similar to the pork one except with beef instead. Mm. The flavor is a bit different. It's definitely more of that tingly, numbing spice, but it's still really good too. I just had some of the beef and it is a bit tough. Not as like melts in your mouth as the pork belly. That's kind of expected because pork belly is super fatty, but still really good, still really solid. I feel the burn in the back of my throat, but for me, it's not too spicy. So yeah, really enjoyable. We also got some cucumber salad. Oh, so crunchy. Wow, so crunchy. Could be more flavorful though. I feel like more garlic, but I really like the crunchy. It's so refreshing. So we are at Molly Moon's, which is a very famous ice cream place in Seattle. It's like one of Bird's favorites because this is a single scoop. At most places, this size would be a double. Bird is all about that big portion life. <laughs> okay. So we ended up getting a single scoop and then getting two flavors. I'm trying the Scout Mint first. Hmm, it's very minty. Very minty. <laughs> Perfect for when you want minty food. What's your description this time? Perfect. Perfect when you want tasty food. <laughs> it's interesting because it's very minty, but not overly minty. Like not to the point where it tastes like toothpaste. And then I like the little bits of, kind of seems like cookies, but also kind of seems like those York peppermint patties. I'm not exactly sure. All right, let's try the cookies and cream. Mm. You know how most places use Oreos for the cookies and cream? They definitely use like their own house-made cookies or some kind of different cookies. I realize that I don't like cookies and cream as much when it doesn't have Oreos in it, but it's still good. Like undeniably it's good, but I would prefer Oreos. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I associate cookies and cream with Oreos. So then when it doesn't taste like Oreos, it just doesn't, like it's a disconnect in my brain, you know? Okay, so we are at Drip Tea now. But before this, we stopped by Frankie and Joe's and they didn't have anywhere to sit to eat their ice cream. So we brought it over here. Don't worry, we got some boba and we are gonna drink that right after we try this ice cream. So Frankie's and Joe's, I've heard really, really good things about. All their ice cream is plant-based. I got the brown sugar vanilla on the top and then on the bottom, we got the strawberry milk. I'm gonna try the brown sugar vanilla first. Wow, it's very thick and luscious, very creamy. You definitely get a strong flavor of the brown sugar and the vanilla. Okay, okay, I can see it. I do have to say, the texture is very similar to real ice cream. Like, it's very thick, creamy. I do think I can taste some sort of like maybe soy taste. I'm not exactly sure because I'm not super familiar with like plant-based alternatives, but it's also like I don't even really mind it because it's actually really good. Like it works so well with the flavor. Let's try the strawberry milk. Mm, the strawberries taste so fresh. You got that same nice texture. And this one, I feel like you can taste that soy stuff less. Like you can't actually really taste it. And maybe the strawberry kind of overpowers it. 
Ooh. Now it's time to try the boba. We got the, what's this called? A monogram or something? Yes, monogram. And we got it in this bottle, this bear bottle. It's so cute. I did pay five extra dollars to get this bear bottle. Basically the monogram drink that we got, it's a brown sugar boba. I already went ahead and shook it all up. So the brown sugar mixed with the milk. I guess the Mei Mei straw will not fit in this because it's quite long. They gave us this comically long straw. It fits perfectly. The boba's not coming up the straw. Mm -mm. Not bad. Definitely has a brown sugar flavor. Boba is a decent texture. Maybe a tiny bit on the hard side, but not too bad. Although I will argue that the boba itself doesn't have much of a brown sugar flavor, which is the point of brown sugar boba. It's supposed to have a lot of brown sugar flavor. The milk and the brown sugar is very brown sugary. So yeah, that part is not bad. And the boba texture is not bad. Just need the brown sugar flavor when you're chewing the boba. I have a feeling they didn't soak it in brown sugar because if they soaked it in brown sugar, it would have more brown sugar flavor. Overall, not bad, but not amazing. So we are here to see the cherry blossoms and most people will tell you to go to University of Washington but our friends let us know that there's this street that has all these cherry blossoms. Not that many people know about this place so it's not super crowded. So yeah, that's just a little pro tip from a Seattle local who is not us, but our friend. You know it, you got me dancing in my bed so let me show it. You are exactly what I want, kinda cool and kinda not. Give myself to you, yeah. We're driving down the freeway at night. I only got one thing in the back of my mind. So we are at Pho Ba. This is a very famous pho place in Seattle. I've heard nothing but great things about them. They're super well known for their beef rib pho. Look how gigantic this beef rib is. This whole thing is only $16 and taxes included. I'm gonna go ahead and try to eat one of these things. Mm, dang, that is fall off the bone tender. It's so beefy, so meaty. Parts of it are very tender, and then parts are a little bit dry, but wow, it still retains a lot of that beef flavor. I've never had pho quite like this before. I know there's many different ways to eat pho. Everyone has their own personal way. My personal favorite way is to put some sriracha in the spoon, grab some noodles, and dip it into the sriracha just like that. Very silky rice noodles, got a bit of a chew to it. I haven't had pho in a while, and this is hitting a spot. Let's try some of this broth. It looks very beefy. Mmm, oh wow. It's like deep beef flavor, but not in a dense or heavy way. So flavorful, but light at the same time. Overall, very solid pho, would recommend. Now we are at Nana's Green Tea and I've been here before in 2019. That was my last trip to Seattle and I remember really, really liking this place. They specialize in a lot of like matcha stuff. So of course we got a matcha latte, but we got it with matcha soft serve on top. And of course we're using our Feed Mei Mei Glass Boba Straw. Link is in the description. It looks so creamy actually. Don't overflow. Ah! Mm. The matcha is so premium like very high quality. It tastes so strongly of matcha, not bitter, and also not too sweet at the same time. Wow, it's like the perfect balance. I'm gonna try some of the matcha soft serve on top. Oh 
my god, the matcha flavor is out of this world. Just a, such a strong flavor, but it's nice and sweet, not bitter at all. I've had a lot of different matcha soft serves in my life. A lot of them are very light and fluffy. This one is definitely not a light and fluffy monster soft serve, but it's like, it doesn't make it any worse. Like it's still really freaking good. I'm in matcha heaven right now. And then we also got a hoji cha float with mochi. There's hoji cha ice cream and two little mochi balls inside. <laughs> Wow, very strong hoji cha. You get that nice roasted flavor. I like the creaminess of the drink as well. I do wish that the drink was a bit sweeter. So let's try the hoji cha ice cream. Mmm. Oh my goodness. It's so nice. It has this like nutty flavor. So creamy, strong, and rich hoji cha flavor. I like the ice cream better than the actual hoji cha latte part. Man, that is unbelievable. Let's try one of these little mochi balls. Every time I get a chewy little mochi, I can't help but smile. It brings me so much joy. I'd say overall, I actually like the matcha one more, but the hoji cha ice cream in this is so freaking good. Like that, I would just order it by itself. Last but not least, we got this matcha mochi parfait. There's a scoop of matcha ice cream, red bean mochi, and then we also have some like corn flakes. And then I think this is like whipped cream and matcha jelly and syrup on the bottom. Wow, the combination of all the different things works so well together. I got the creamy matcha ice cream, which has a really nice matcha flavor. Then you get the red bean, which also adds sweetness as well. And then the mochi is so soft. It's actually better in this parfait than it is in that hoji cha drink. And then you get the crunch from the cornflakes. I wasn't so sure about that. I was not sold on it, but it works. You guys need to come here. It's legit so good. They have this really nice seating area and they have outlets and they have Wi-Fi. So it's a great place to get some work done. So now we are at Taku in Capitol Hill. The vibes in here are super great. It almost feels like you're in a shop in Japan because they have really cool decor. They're playing anime on the TV. We're actually grabbing a quick dinner before we go to a concert. We got their chicken karage. This is the three piece. These pieces of karage are huge. That is super unique. I've never had karage like this before. The batter is almost like it's coated in breadcrumbs kind of batter. Like if you can see, these are like kind of breadcrumbs kind of things. This one is very different. I'm used to it being very light and crispy. I think the chicken is juicy, has good flavor, but I do prefer the usual karage batter to this one. Next, we got the spicy chicken sando. Whenever I see a spicy chicken sando on a menu, I cannot resist ordering it. So here we go. Mm. At first, I did not taste any spice, but it hits you at the end. I definitely feel the heat in my mouth. I just love how the mixture of flavors in this, it just blends really well together. You got the crunch and acidity from the pickles. It also brings like a more refreshingness to it because the chicken is fried. So it's nice to have that little crunch. And I also really like the heat level. It definitely delivers on the spiciness. And then we got the furikake fries. I can never resist fries on a menu. Mm. Oh, whoa, a nice light crunch. The flavor though is very unique. Definitely get like a furikake seaweedy flavor but then also there's like bonito powder on it i think it has like this fishy flavor to it very addicting last but not least i saw on their menu they had something called pokemon mochi and they said it's kind of like a potato dumpling like a japanese gnocchi almost so i'm very curious about it it comes with this glazed sauce type of thing and some sliced almonds mm, that is like unlike anything i've ever had it's like a potato ball, but then there's like a kind of sweetness to it, maybe from the sauce. And then the almonds also bring a sweetness. So it almost was like a cross between a dessert and a savory item. I don't know. Why is it called mochi? It's not mochi. Like it doesn't have the chewy texture that mochi does. Also very salty. It's like sweet, but salty. Glad I tried it, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. Driving down the freeway at night. I only got one thing in the back of my mind. You got me stuck I'm feeling like this my So the concert was super fun. I low-key, I didn't lose my voice, but it's definitely kind of weak. We were a little bit hungry, so we door dashed some food. A lot of you guys on my Instagram recommended Dick's Drive-In. We got some fries. We also got the deluxe burger. I feel like there's two patties in there. Then there's cheese, lettuce. Hmm. Not a bad burger, but also not amazing. It's no in and out 
but decent. I love fries with ketchup. I mean, I love fries plain too, because I love all kinds of fries, but fries with ketchup just hits different. A bit soggy, but that's probably not their fault. We got it on DoorDash. We also got a strawberry milkshake. It has like a light strawberry flavor. Would have liked more strawberry, but it's like creamy, not too thick. Overall, not a bad spot. It probably tastes better if you eat it there. We're cat sitting our friend's cat. His name's Toasty. Toasty, say goodnight. Meow. That was him. Good night. Staring out the window, reaching for a North Star. Okay, so we are at 19 Gold in the Fremont area of Seattle. We've actually been to this place before. Last time we remember really liking their food. First up, we have a beef noodle soup. I am a sucker for beef noodle soup. Ooh. It has a nice light beefy flavor. A little bit of spice, not too much. Very small kick, which I'm not mad at. Ooh. Beef, pretty tender, but a little bit on the dry side. Noodle texture, I wish it was more springy and bouncy. I do think it does a good job of holding the flavor of the broth. I actually do like the flavor of the broth a lot. We also got some garlic string beans. Mmm, has a nice crunch, a nice garlicky flavor. You know how sometimes string beans can be squeaky? There is no squeak in sight here. This I'm really excited for. So we got the deep fried chicken cutlet, which is basically like that really huge fried chicken that you can get at the night markets in Taiwan. But it's spicy, so you can see there's some chili powder on top. Mm, mm, mm. That batter is so nice and light and crispy. It has a little bit of a chew to it, which is like how the ones in Taiwan are. I think they use chicken breast, and the chicken is quite juicy still. This is bringing me right back to Taiwan. Mm. On the side, they give you some minced pork rice, also known as luro fan, which is also a super famous Taiwanese dish. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. The flavor is so on point, it's savory, it meshes so well with the fattiness of the pork. I like this dish the best. If you guys get one thing here, it has to be this deep fried chicken cutlet with the luro fan, the minced pork rice. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lettuce. We went to Indigo Cow and they're supposedly the first ice cream place in the US to use milk straight from Hokkaido. They're known for their Hokkaido soft serve, which is exactly what we got. And then we also got a topping that includes mochi, roasted soybean powder, and brown sugar syrup. I'm so excited. Look at that texture. Whoa. It almost reminds me of cheese. Like very rich and milky and creamy and decadent. Not really cheesy, but like the creaminess of cheese. If you have it plain, you definitely taste like the pure milky creaminess. But then when you have it with the toppings, it adds a nice sweetness and definitely more flavor. Also this cup, I think after tax, it was like almost $9. So kind of expensive. Overall, I think it's good and worth trying. Not mind blowing really amazing.
Now we are at Timeless Tea. And a lot of you guys recommended this to me on my Instagram story as well. I saw that they have this chocolate bulldog mousse. It's just chocolate mousse shaped like a bulldog. And I couldn't resist getting it. It's so cute, look at that. It's so detailed. You can see like every little fur. Although I think this is supposed to be the tail, but it looks like something else. It's almost too cute to eat, but we're totally gonna eat it. Uh-oh, wait, oh, there's like cake in there. But look at the dog. Rip. Okay, let's try it. Hmm, very nice and chocolatey. It's kind of like gelatinous. I think it's probably like that to keep the shape of the dog because mousse is not usually this gelatinous. It's usually more creamy and light and fluffy. The texture is not quite like normal mousse, but it tastes yummy and it's very cute. Next up, we have this taro crepe cake. For some reason, on my phone footage, it looks blue, but it's actually very, very purple in person. I got this because Bird loves crepe cakes. It's like one of his favorite things. Look at all those layers yeah whoa the taro is definitely like the artificial taro taste bird is not impressed last but not least we have the milk cream strawberry drink i'm not quite sure what's in it definitely we have some like milk foam type of stuff on top and then the strawberry i assume is like a strawberry fruit tea Ooh, it looks so creamy now of course we have our mei mei straw Ooh. Hmm. So it does have like a light strawberry flavor and I like how you can get the fresh strawberry chunks in there But in terms of like the taste of the drink, it tastes very like watered down I don't taste any tea. It almost tastes like it was strawberry water with milk foam on top Because usually when you order drinks like this, they use like a strawberry green tea And then they put the cheese foam or the milk foam on top But yeah, we're gonna be going to a few more boba places around here We're gonna find out which one is the best So we are at our second boba stop of the day This place is called Sip House They have a lot of different kinds of drinks But the one I got is actually a Vietnamese iced coffee with ube syrup They told us to give it a good mix before we try it Ooh, whoa. First off, that Vietnamese iced coffee is strong. I was scared that it would actually drown out the ube flavor, but the ube flavor is quite prominent too. It's 5.45 and I'm drinking iced coffee. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> See you guys at the next boba shop. All right, this is the third boba stop. We are at Don't Yell At Me. A lot of you guys recommended this. You guys, look at this logo. It's very interesting. So we have our Osmanthus Jasmine Milk Tea with brown sugar pearls. Okay, let's stir this up. Whoa, their brown sugar boba, like as a topping, is actually very brown sugary. And that's super rare. I think they really soak it in that brown sugar. It's like when you chew it, the sweetness really comes out. Usually I talk a lot about the texture because most places don't flavor their boba like this flavorful. The texture itself is okay. Like some of them are a bit mushy. I'm just like so shocked at the flavor. All right, let me get some of the milk tea. Whoa, wow, I really like the tea flavor. And since this one is Osmanthus Jasmine, it really brings out the floraliness of the tea. It's actually really interesting because I asked for regular sweetness and they said the regular sweetness is 50%, which most places don't do that. Usually regular is like 100. And so when I drink the milk tea itself, it's very not sweet. But then when you combine it with the sweet, sweet boba, it like balances out the non-sweetness of the drink. It's very nice. If you got the jasmine milk tea without boba though, it wouldn't be sweet enough. If I had a critique on the milk tea, it definitely could be creamier. More like the kind of watery type of milk tea. I'm not saying it's like watered down. I'm just saying it's like, it could be creamier if I'm being picky. So we are at our last boba stop of the day, I think. I hope. <laughs> we stopped by Boba Gem. I was looking at their most popular menu items and I just couldn't resist this fresh milk black tea with ube foam. So I got that and I added some boba. I love all the layers. You got the ube foam on top, the fresh milk, the black tea, and boba. I'm gonna go ahead and try it by sipping it first so I can see if I can get like the different layers. Whoa, that does not taste how I expected it to. I don't taste 
the ube. I don't taste black tea either. I mean, I taste something sweet, but I don't taste distinctly ube flavor. I don't think it tastes bad. I think it tastes good, actually. I just think that the flavors are not what I expected and a bit undistinguishable. I think it tastes good. Do I think it tastes like milk tea or ube? No. <laughs> I'm gonna try licking this foam, see if I can get that ube flavor. We're gonna kind of taste it when I lick it directly. It's good. But let's go ahead and shake it up and see what that tastes like. Okay, so now I'm getting the milk tea flavor, which I really like. There's no bitterness at all to it. Still not really getting an ube flavor. The boba itself, a little bit on the hard side, but not too bad. I think it's good. It's just not what I expected. Okay, so we are at Danbo Ramen and it is literally 10.42 p.m. The wait was like an hour and 15 or something. I got the classic Rekka Ramen, which the classic ramen is the tonkotsu broth and then the Rekka is like the spiciness. You can customize the kind of noodles you get, the firmness, as well as the richness of the broth. These are actually so thin. Like I usually order thin noodles at Ramen Nagi and at Ichiran, but these are even thinner than those. Wow, I love the way the flavor of the broth sticks onto the noodles. It's quite spicy actually, which I really like. Whenever I can customize my noodles, I always get firm. I really like when it has a chew to it. All right, let's try some of this broth. Mm, definitely has a nice rich pork flavor to it. And I like the spiciness. Woo. We have a piece of chashu. Mm, so tender, so fatty. This is definitely a solid bowl of ramen. All right, so that's it for part one of the Seattle food tour. Here's a little preview of what you can expect for part two. So if you're excited for that, make sure you hit the thumbs up. And yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload. Give this video a thumbs up. And here's today's comment shout out. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to be in the next video's comment shout out, make sure you comment something down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week for part two. Bye. Why did they make this the dark brown? Like they should have just kept it the same color as the dog and make it look like I just couldn't resist this fresh milk um, What the heck is this called? One day I'm gonna perform there Okay, okay. At Broadway, Riding, Pharmacy?